So, yeah, so, sorry, I, I was trying to figure out where is the mute button. OK. Um, uh, do you see my screen, Steve? Yes. OK. Um, OK. Yeah, so um, hello everyone. My name is Shahida Begum Sheikh. Um, uh, I'm under pressure that I'm not a UCOMP user yet, but I, I would like to use it for the science questions that I have uh, on the work that I'm currently doing. So uh, I'm going to talk about the study nested ring CME cavity. Um, and also, I want to um, talk about what UCOM can uh, observe on the basis of flux ropes and CMEs. Um, so this is a study which I'll give a quick overview because this is the one which I spoke two months back in a HOA uh, colloquium where some of you were there. So I'll give an overview of this study. And while we were doing working on this uh, particular CME, nested rings cavity CME observed on that day, uh, we tried to answer a few questions in this study, and also we came up uh, some other questions which are not answered for now. I think you can, uh, you comp can do those, and I have some ad additional science questions which I would like to discuss with you guys. Um, so that can be the second part of this uh, presentation. Um, so some of you might know that Whisper is the only imaging instrument on board Parker Solar Probe. Uh, which not doesn't directly look at the sun, but with an offset. Um, and also it has an elongation angle from the sun around 13.5 degrees to 108 degrees from, from the sun. Um, so here uh, we're going to discuss about one of the CMEs observed by Whisper. So in general, we know that uh, when eruption takes place or the reconnection happens on the surface of the sun, um, the plasmoid or the fruct ropes that forms are yeah, that exists above the X point um, erupts out as a CME. And when we observe that CME looks like this three part structure with core cavity and leading edge. So having that in mind, uh, we also have some some studies which have shown us, uh, thanks to Ursula for all, already giving a setting up uh, the stage for with cavities that have observed on the top of prominences, like what we see here. Um, so if this is a prominence, and so this is a Hudson uh, X-ray observations, and uh, I, I believe this is from K-core observations, which Ursula just show, showed us for the counter streaming or the line of sight um, uh, velocity measurements. Um, and these are the Yuhong fans um, simulation, where if you take the cross section of that flux rope, uh, shows such uh, nested structure. So. Um, now in this CME, which uh, Whisper has shown us, so this is the inner detector of Whisper. There is outer detector also. But this study, I'm, I'm just focusing on the inner detector images as what we have here. So let me play that movie. Let me pause there. So as I showed the three-part structure, uh, two, two slides uh, previous to this, um, we see the front, bright front, and uh, bright core and cavity. But here we. Do we see that something like that? We, we yes, yes, we see the bright front a little bit, but uh, the core looks uh, very complicated. Where we have these striated shapes and those ring structure um, as it propagates. So if let me play from the beginning, so you see that those rings propagate as the CME moves out. So if we take the snap snapshots of that movie, uh, if I hand draw that, so this is what the number of significant three rings that we see. And also there is a core ring, which looks like that U-shaped structure, which which is seen in uh, many of the other C white light CMEs, where it is believed, believed as the inner dip of the flux rope. So, um, let me, yeah. So now if we look at the spacecraft, multi-spacecraft observations of this CME, um, so if the center of the, sorry, if the sun is here, so this is the direction of the CME, Earth is here, stereo is at one, and three is the Parker Solar Probe. Um, and if we look at the images of all the three instruments, uh, three in the sense of SOHO from Earth, if we take the images and if we uh, make the solar knot up, we get the planes of sky uh, in this form aligned. Uh, as you see that uh, 
Whisper is in gray color, Stereo is in orange, and uh, Blue is uh, Lasco. So for this particular CME, this CME is seen from opposite sides uh, as what we see here is Stereo and uh, Parker Solar Probe, so which makes the planes of sky parallel to each other when the CME is in the field of view. So which is very optimal situation to um, analyze a CME, having two instruments observe the same CME and the features within it. So um, if you look at the source region of this activity, of this CME, um, basically on 20th, 0 UT, uh, so actual eruption happens around 8 UT. So eight hours before we see a filament eruption happening in 304 uh, EUVI observations. And if you look at that wavelength, uh, we start seeing that, that the source region is not uh, on the limb, on the disk, but it is just behind the limb where we start seeing the reconfiguration of these large loop system. So if we follow these uh, white arrow marks, we can see that they, they become larger. And as the eruption happens, so they widen up and uh, they cool down as the post-eruption uh, UV loops. So, um, so having all that, the questions that we ask is, first one is, and these nested rings that we observe in white light observations, do we see them in all the CMEs? Um, actually, we don't see in all the CMEs, but some of the CMEs have shown us. So the question is why we're not, we not seeing it frequently? And um, is it on the basis of uh, the instrumentation or on the basis of physically they are present or not? The second question that we, uh, that we try to answer is, uh, are these rings one coherent structure? To show that whether it's a one system of uh, system of the CMA which is erupting out, and the last question is, um, what are these uh, nested ring structures actually? If they are a part of the flux rope in the CME, where do we see them within the flux rope? So those are the questions. So first to answer uh, the question whether uh, why we are not seeing the nested ring CME very frequently. So we try to observe here um, to two different uh, instruments. One is Stereo Co2 and uh, Whisper observations. So in general, when we do the normal processing in the sense just, just by subtracting the one previous frame or running subtraction or running ratio, um, what we get here is, uh, is the CME structure in Co2 observations, white light. So when we apply the more sophisticated um, uh, process of uh, wavelet, wavelet processing, so what we see is uh, a CME is a little bit more enhanced and we can start seeing the features within it. So now if we compare with Whisper, whisper observations, we still uh, cannot look at, get the, the striations that we see here in the front and those rings inside the CME and the core is not very clear. And the cavity is kind of visible here and, and there, but it's not completely um, seen even after applying the wavelet processing technique. So the reasonings that we give for that is, um, if we assume that all the CMEs have nested rings within it, so what might be the conditions a, 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 any instrument will require? So first can be the angular resolution. For Let's say that for Whisper, it's 26 arc seconds at 0.1 AU of distance. So we know that Parker Solar Pro Probe is very close to the sun and it's uh, observing the features from that close uh, proximity. And the angular resolution is around 26 arc seconds. Whereas uh, CO2 is at one AU distance, far farther distance, and the angle, angular resolution is almost similar to uh, Whisper. And second one is the exposure time. For Whisper, it's a longer exposure, whereas uh, CO2 is six seconds, which is not very, very nominal to have uh, refine all the features that we see as what we see in Whisper. So, <clears throat> In this case, what we are having as, as plus advantages are, one is the good viewing angle. So it's the, in, both the instruments are looking through the axis of, of the CME uh, or the core of axis or guide, fi, guide field of the flux rope in the CME. And uh, we know that angular resolution here are comparable. Um, and exposure time, obviously, Whisper has a higher uh, exposure time. And the other important uh, feature is um, observing distance. So we know that as it is observing very close to the 
um, feature. So in white light observation, we are basically integrating all the all the structures in the front of the CME and the back of the CME, right? So we are basically bl blurring out this optical optically thin emission. So if we have the shorter distance, so we are basically having less background and le less foreground uh, that can blur the CME. So that's an added advantage in this CME where we have a closer proximity and second one is the exposure time, making it to resolve all the CME structures. So uh, so for the second question, whether physically all, all the CMEs have nested rings or not, so we don't have a very, very clear, robust data set to, uh, is there any question? Um, is there a question? Okay, so I'll, I'll come back to those questions, sorry. Um, so as I said, we don't have a very clear, robust uh, data set to get those nested ring CMEs in a white light observations and correspondingly uh, compare them with the pre-existing flux rope scenarios. So we have a couple of examples here um, in Encounter 10 of Park Solar Probe and also from uh, many many examples from uh, Soho, Soho Lasco. But uh, for example, here, in order to resolve whisper observations, we do not have uh, the uh, source region on the disk. So for this event also, it's in the backside of the sun. So um, we unfortunately couldn't answer that question whether these rings are related to the rings that we are seeing on in the cavity on the surface of the sun before the eruption. So now move on to the moving on to the co coherency of the nested rings. We try to take three different points on the rings, and uh, we simply get the distance from one uh, single point from the inner field of view of Whisper, and try to get the distance as it moves with uh, in, within the field of view. And what we see is all the three points behave in the same, almost the same manner. Or the slope shows that they all move in one coherent behavior. So there is kind of a jump here for the inner core ring that is the star mark. So that happens uh, when the when the CMA is propagating. We see that there is a separation between the inner core and the outer outer uh, outer rings. So that might be due to the CMA itself or due to the movement of Parker Solar Probe uh, um, while it is observing the CMA. So these are all the pla plane of sky observations. We try to get the deprojected velocities um, from using sorry using this uh, diagram where basically what we have is, this is the feature, let's say this is the CME, sun and Parker Solar Probe. We try to get this phi two minus phi one angle, which essentially shows whether the uh, feature is moving away from the planar sky or not. So we try to get that. So we essentially not, doesn't see much of, um, uh, much of the difference between each of those rings. But uh, they, sh they still show that uh, all the rings are moving in one coherent structure. So let's, uh, yeah. So then we try to apply uh, graduated cylindrical shell model for the flux rope of the CME as what we see here. So all the three is basically on, here it's the stereo core two observations, SOHO C3 observations and WHISPER. So these are the parameters used to fit the flux rope for all the, all the all the three observations. So as we see that from compared with the observations, uh, the models look um, very uh, best fit with the observations. And also, if you see that uh, the flux rope here is more uh, extended in the backside, which is essentially what we see in uh, in the orbit plot of uh, of the location of the CME and the SOHO's location. So then um, now looking at more into what are these nested rings and why we are seeing seeing those rings in CME. So uh, from in situ observations with the magnetic cloud of uh, in, uh, interplanetary CME observations, um, people have came up with this such cartoon, which is basically a um, multiple flux surfaces within the flux rope. So for example, if we ha if you are looking through this uh, guide field or the inner axial field, of the flux rope and what we see the two dimensional projection of this uh, 3D structure looks something like this. So we try to get the modeling done using GCS by creating different flux surfaces like this. Um, and here we have only the density, not, not I'm not representing any magnetic field strand, but I'm just representing the structure of this uh, flux rope as what we see here. And those colored dots are basically the cut, this hori uh, horizontal green cut, if we take a cut in in the observations and the model, 
we say that the, those peaks are comparable with each other. Um, so which essentially shows that uh, we can, so this model can um, basically show that uh, it can be the flux rope or the internal structure of the flux rope itself. Um, there can be another perspective where where we are looking through the axis of the flux rope, where there we have a wreath of the flux rope, uh, which is twisted like this and not a straight um, cylindrical surface. And if we have the flux, flux rope in that, uh, in that way, and if you are looking through that, and each of those uh, uh, twists inside the flux rope can still be seen as not perfectly like this uh, nested structure, but we still see a uh, nested circular shape as what we uh, see there. And here is one example which shows uh, this is not very a very good clear picture, but when we run this as a movie, we see that a very helical shaped um, as we see here in the observations. So if we look through that, uh, looking through this axis of the flux rope, we can still see nested structure. So um, as a sum as a summary, I would say that the existence of this nested rings in the pre-eruptive prominence cavity system, like Ursula showed showed us. Um, so we have seen that, and here in this CME, we have seen nested rings. So this questions whether the flux ropes are formed well before the eruption or as a co consequence of uh, eruption or, or not. So um, we don't know whether uh, in those cases, it shows that the flux ropes are already formed. Um, so as in this particular CME, we don't have very good information on the source region because it's in, it's in the backside of the CME. Uh, backside of the sun, we couldn't get that information of the pre-existing prominence cavity system. So I would say that this nested rings in this CME can be the contribution from the internal morphology or the projection of the flux rope, as I showed previously. And the second one is it can be the counterpart of the ongoing reconnection process, which is based essentially wrapping up the poloidal flux on the center axis of the flux rope. Um, and also it shows that uh, the overall whisper observation shows how the um, apparent uh, integrity of the flux ropes as it maintains to those very large heliospheric distances as we observed in uh, whisper roughly from um, 9 solar radii to roughly 53 solar radii. The, those rings persistently continue to maintain their shape as they move in, that, uh, in those distances. So that is the summary of the study that we have done with the nested CME. So now uh, let's move on to UCOMP observations. So I'm not showing any observations here, but what we can do through UCOMP's observations, as we have seen this nested CME. So I have come up with a few questions uh, which can be answered uh, from UCOMP. So first one is the evolution of the CME. I will talk in a bit about the, the first point. So where basically, um, when I mean evolution of the CMEs, so we have seen pre-existing cavity rings and we have seen CME cavity rings, but we don't know what is the relation between, between them. So when these cavities erupt, do they give rise to the CME cavity rings? That's first question. And then um, in some cases, uh, uh, the superposition of the legs of the flux ropes uh, can be interpreted as the filament itself, So, but they are not the filament actually. So some in some cases there are, there are no filaments, but still the flux rope looks like a filament. So in to make that uh, argument clear, we need to have UCOMP observations. For example, um, as what we are seeing here, where we can continue from. So this is not from UCOMP, but it's K core. You see that. So from when there is an eruption on the sun surface, they continue in K core, and we start to have a continuous observation of the flux rope. So which can essentially uh, allow us to make that connection between uh, pre-existing rings and the erupting rings. So for example, in this CME, if I, uh, let me play that movie in, in a bit, but uh, what we see here is EUV here, and also CO2 at 2.5 solar radii. The inner field of view is at that 2.5 solar radii. Um, so when I look at the movie of this, so which I have shown earlier, so we start seeing that flux rope rising and then it erupts and it continues in CO2. But we couldn't clearly get a picture of how the flux rope actually looks like. So is it a helical flux rope or is it something else? We don't know. So there is a clear gap in that middle corona region where 
we cannot continuously observe the eruption from the sun to to go to observations. So where the essential part of the CME goes through a lot of changes, and we need to understand how how it works. So that's first point where evolution of CMEs is important through UCOMP observations. And second one is uh, is the flux rope characteristics. So as we have seen that cavities on the limb when they are observed on the limb, we have seen them as uh, as cavities. Um, so the first question that can be answered is clues for the formation of the flux rope during the eruption. So, so there have been a long debate whether the flux rope is formed during the eruption or is it already formed and it's the one which is erupting out. So it can give those clues. So you come observations when we track a cavity, it might give clues on the formation of the flux rope itself. And second one is the understanding the pre-existing flux rope characteristics like for example we have seen coca k core observations with line of sight uh, plane of sky motion and sp spinning motions i'll talk a bit in, about that so we have already seen it but i will quickly go over that uh, pre-existing flux flux rope characteristics and the other one is the uh, rotation of the tilt of the flux rope so what I mean by that is um, when we do the graduated cylindrical shell model fitting, so the tilt of the flux rope, flux rope is important. So there are a few examples where when we look at the polarity inversion line, if it is aligned in east and west direction, there are many cases that uh, the flux rope that we are fitting back in uh, GCS model are almost like 90 degrees flipped. and we. Uh, we we don't know what happened in between how much the flux how much the flux rope has um, uh, made that rotation and we couldn't see that in uh, in in other observations like lasco and stereo so in that also if we have ucomp observation which can give the continuous uh, observation from the sun to the heliosphere we can get the understanding of how the tilt of the flux rope is changing so so this is an example of multiple observations, which with multiple studies which have done on cavities. So I have just uh, listed a few here. So we know, as we have seen in previous talk, we we see that there is a prominence in the top of it. There is cavity. The corresponding prominence when we see in three or four looks like this. And um, so those studies have already shown us how the plane of sky flows look like and line of sight um, flow velocity flows look like. So um, there are some other observations like uh, Wong and Stenbock, which have shown a spinning motion in uh, um, in EUV observations. So they have shown us that after the reconnection happens, the movement goes more towards the weaker side of the of the filament. So such observations can be done very clearly once we have uh, UCOP. Uh, so when we have UCOP. Uh, with a cavity and also erupting cavity. So that's that's what we have. Uh, I have here with the flux rope characteristics. And the last one is um, is having, uh, so you can, can be a very good uh, complementary data for uh, radio CME observations. So for example, what I have here is uh, a few examples of CME as it erupts from the sun surface. So at so here we have MWA 80 megahertz of frequencies, and other one is uh, NASA radio heliograph at those different fre uh, frequencies of radio frequencies. So when we have those uh, radio observations, and when when they are spatially resolved, what we can do is each point in those CMEs can be taken, and uh, we can do a fitting like this, which essentially gives the plasma parameters of that CME eruption. So we know that UCOM can give density, temperature, and magnetic field information and velocity. So this can be UCOM can be a very good um, complementary data set to validate what we are seeing or vice versa. <clears throat> so whatever we are getting from these uh, derived radio uh, measurements, we can compare that with the plasma parameters or magnetic parameters that we get from UCOM. So with that, I will. Uh, uh, and and essentially what I'm showing here is uh, all these questions are addressed uh, with the science objective of UCOMP, which basically talks about the evolution of prominence eruption and CME initialization. So I'll stop there. Thank you. I'll take questions or we can have a discussion on that. Thank you. Thank you. So we have just a minute or two for uh, questions. I think 
I think Amy put something in the chat. Yeah, Amy did. I was trying to see if I could post it on here, but can somebody read it from the computer? She can't. She can't talk. She's like, oh, I can go ahead and read it. Uh, uh, yeah, so Amy says that is this substructure persistent across the field of view of uh, Whisper? Would you expect this density structure to be observable by Parker? Um, so let me answer the first question. Is this substructure persistent across the field of view? Yeah, so it is persistent, but um, what the CME goes through um, a deformation after a point uh, when it is in the center of the field of view of the inner detector. So at that point, uh, the whole CME becomes like a pancaked shape, as you see. Let me share the screen quickly. Um, so um, so it maintains that circular shape, but after a point, if you see that it becomes yeah so so there there is this another study in our group which have discussed how the deformation is taking place and we have also observed that there is a high stream wind in the front so basically the cme is interacting with that high stream wind and it um, basically deforms but going back to your question whether the rings uh, let's say that before deformation uh, whether these structures are persistent persistent i would say they are persistent but only difference that we see here is sometimes they are the rings are separated, sometimes they are merged with each other. So that can be just due to the viewing of uh, viewing of the CME, um, or due to CME flux rope itself is merging in inside, or it's a it's a counterpart of what is going on in the in the reconnection, or there can be something happening within the flux rope, which might be creating that uh, merging or separating between those rings. Um, and with the second question, would you expect this density structure to be, oh, you mean in situ, in situ observations, right? Amy, is that what you meant? Uh, would you expect this density structure to be observ observable by Parker in the sense in situ? Is that what you meant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, OK, got it. Yeah. So. Um, for this CME, we don't have uh, in situ observations because by the time Parker crossed the CME, the CME had already left that region. So we don't have any um, uh, in situ to compare with what we are seeing here. But in some other cases, we have seen that um, when there is a complex CME, white light CME, and uh, the in, in situ parameters look quite different uh, when, depending on the CME complexity. So that we have definitely seen, but not in this uh, CME. Um, yeah. So does that answer your question, Amy? Thank you, Shahida. I think we're gonna stop yeah. now and break and break for lunch. Excellent. Sure. Um, yeah, sure. And so, Mark has a question. I'll try to answer them on the chat. Okay. Thank you. Let's keep thank the window open.